The story's just beginning and I hope you have fun Whether the clouds have been rainy or you've played in the sun So come and gather round, sit yourself down It's time for a story with Rory Hello dear friends Oh, I do hope you're all well, um, in mind as well as in body. Uh, but if you're not feeling so good this week, I'm going to send you some positive feelings, some positive energy, uh, so you'll feel better through the internet. So, um, so here we go. Well, I hope that um, I hope that finds you and gives you a little bit of um, a little bit of energy, a little bit of a boost. Um, it's important that we all have a laugh, and you know we don't take things too seriously, uh, which reminds me of something funny that happened this week. I came in late one night. I've been out having a few drinks with somebody, and I'll tell you all about that later. But I came in late, and uh, Mr. Flem, my, my landlord, he was in a right titter. I said, um, I said, what's wrong, Mr. Flem? He said, Rory, he said, I'm, uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, my wife's gone to bed and uh, she's fast asleep. I said, well, that's, that's good. Yeah, but she hasn't taken her sleeping pills. I don't know whether I should wake her up. I'm like, no, no, just let her sleep, let her sleep, you know. <laughs> and I went up to my room and I, <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. I thought, oh, you silly bugger, you know. But um, yeah, that, so that made me, uh, made me smile. Uh, something that didn't make me smile... Uh, which I'm taking quite seriously is I had a, a phone call from a Larry, my agent, last week, and he said um, I'd gone up for an audition. Um, I went to see a casting director, and uh, I don't think I did very well. But anyway, Larry said this casting director thought um, I had a silly voice, you know, a, a ridiculous voice, and I shouldn't be I shouldn't be an actor with a voice like this. Um, I, th- I think he's being very very rude if you ask me. But uh, anyway, Larry has suggested I have um, voice lessons, ele- elocutional lessons, and he's got me um, he's got me an appointment to see this lady called Doreen Breeze, who apparently can hypnotise you and, and give you vocal lessons at the same time. <laughs> oh, well, we'll see we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so that starts um, it starts starts tomorrow. Actually, I've got my first appointment with Doreen Breeze tomorrow. So we'll see how see how that goes. Um, now, what else happened this week? Oh, oh yeah, I nearly came a right cropper. I um, I thought it might be nice to take Lucy horse riding because she's always talked about riding. She, I think she's a good rider actually, and she's always been talking about horses and ponies and stuff. So, I made a I made a, a an appointment with her stables just outside of town. We caught a train together. I didn't tell her where we were going, and um, I thought not not romantic like, but you know, it might be just a bit of fun for a couple of friends. And we went horse riding. And um, they picked us up at the, at, the, at the train station in a little van and took us back out to the, to the, to the farm. And we went off on a, on a couple of horses. Now, my horse, now you've got to remember this, my horse is called Patience. Patience of all names. Anyway, a steam train came through the town. Uh, well, not through the town. There was a, there was a train track, you know. It, came, it was going along the train track, not just running through the town. And it went, ooh, ooh, you know. And my horse bolted for some reason. Now, I'm not an experienced rider. I'm, I'm not, you know. I've, I've been on a horse a couple of times, but this thing started to run really fast, and I didn't know what to do. I thought maybe the best thing to do is jump off. So I took my feet out of the stirrups, and I was about to throw myself off um, when I realised I was going too fast, and so I was just kind of hanging on for dear life. But I slipped. Because I had no feet in the stirrups, I just sort of slid round, and I ended up upside down around the horse's neck with my feet around his neck, hanging on for dear life. Now, Lucy's galloped up alongside me and she's shouting, Rory, Rory, what are you doing? I was like, well, what do you think I'm doing? I'm trying to save my life. I'm hanging on for dear life here, you know? Um, and, oh, my goodness, I was petrified. But eventually the horse did slow down and it came to a standstill and I was able to sort of drop down uh, without getting hurt. So no broken bones. Everything was cool. I'll, I'll, I'll live another day. Uh, and as they say, you know, when you fall off a horse, get back on. So I did. I got back on and we walked very slowly back to the um, to the farm. But um, patience. I <laughs> don't know what happened to patience. But um, that was that was interesting. 
Oh, that thing was interesting. <laughs> Galloping along. <laughs> you should have filmed it, you know, that would be funny. But another thing that happened to me this week, um, I was I was going down to the YMCA, to the gym there, and I was on my bike, and uh, when I got to the entrance, Juan, my Colombian friend, was coming out, and so we, we were having a bit of a chat. Um, I had my bike, I was sitting on my bike still, actually chatting to him, and uh, I noticed this van, this van came along and parked up alongside us, uh, and I just saw it, it was just sitting, you know, it was just parked for a few seconds, and it drove off, and uh, Juan and I are chatting away, you know, and then the van turned up again, and, and this little old man jumped out, and then the van, you know, whoever the driver was, he sped off, the little old man ran over to the bike rack, and, and he had a big pair of chain cutters, and he cut a, a chain on one of the bikes, grabbed the bike, and, and rode off. And uh, Juan said, he's just nicked a bike. Go and get him, Rory. I was like, oh, yeah, you go and get him, Juan. But anyway, I had the bike, so off I went. I went off after this, after this old man. And it didn't take me long to catch up with him, because he is an old man. Plus, the bike didn't have a saddle. It had no seat, just a pole sticking up, so the whole fella couldn't sit down. And um, I said, "That's a, you just stolen that bike. That's a stolen bike. Get off it. He's like, no, it's not. It's my bike. No, it's not. You just stole it. I just saw you cut the chain, you know? So he's like, f*** off you. But he um, he wandered off, and uh, I took the bike back to the, to the YMCA, and the fella that owned the bike um, took me out for a beer. Yeah, that was, that was the night I got back late and found Mr. Flem in a bit of a bit of a state. But uh, so that that's happened this week. That was that was rather interesting. And we began filming on the horror movie where I get to play some sort of creepy caveman. But we only did one day's filming, so I, I'm not going to tell you too much about that. In fact, we've got four or five days next week. So I'll tell you all about that next next week. So I think it's now time for um, poetry. It's poetry time! Whippee! Now here's a, here's a poem called You Can Stand Alone. I met a girl who told me how she nearly lost her mind. She thought the boy that she loved was being true. She penned his name upon her flesh and she proudly showed the world. Because when you're young and in love, that's what you do. But he walked away and he didn't stop and he never looked back, and neither of them ever said goodbye. But now she's independent, she lives alone, and she does what she wants, and there's no more tears in her eyes to cry. Maybe there's a reason why we do what we do, even when we're told it's so insane. But does it really matter when we look out of place, and everybody else looks the same? Yet what's the point in walking through the eye of a storm if you're not really sure you want to die? Because you're not alone, so don't be afraid to be out of place. Only you know the reason why. Your time will come when you find you're strong enough to let go and you can stand alone. Break that wall of stone. You can stand alone and fly. There. That's my poem for this week. Uh, called Stand Alone. And it's now joke time. <laughs> Here, um, Larry sent me up for a, an audition last week for the musical, The Full Monty. Um, apparently, I um, I failed by an inch. <laughs> oh, I get it? I failed by an inch. Oh, it's terrible. That's terrible. Anyway, it's uh, it's Rory Gherkin saying, cheerio for now, a tutelur to you all, and stay safe, look after yourselves, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Cheerio. A tutelur. <laughs> it's time to say goodbye, but there's no reason why Well, we can get together once again I hope you've had some fun hearing all the things I've done So let's all get together once again Now turn to the person standing near to you Give them a smile and a wave and say, how do you do? It's time to say goodbye, but there's no need to cry. It's time to say goodbye, but there's no need to cry. It's time to say goodbye, but there's no need to cry. It's time to say goodbye, but there's no need to cry. It's time to say goodbye, but there's no need to cry.